welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Super excited to return to Edgar Casey. We have had some amazing episodes of The Reality Revolution dedicated to Edgar Casey so far. I recommend you check out Edgar Casey's interpretation of the book of Revelation. Also, the discussion of the link between the children of the law of one and Edgar Casey as a sort of verification of some of the information in the law of one material. Also, Edgar Casey's discussion of intuition. And there is so much information available from Edgar Casey. If you go and join the ARE, they have a full database of all of his channelings. And it just goes on and on. And after you read it, it's overwhelming on some level. I could see people just getting lost in it forever. He accessed the Akashic Record and most of the time was accurate to a very high degree. And some people have gone back and look at some of the things he was incorrect about, which was like about Atlantis. And it's still possible that events had happened that he had talked about. One of the most fascinating aspects of this is that Edgar Cayce didn't believe a lot of stuff that he channeled at first, things like reincarnation. But one of the really mind-blowing aspects of the channeled material by Edgar Cayce is his discussion where the soul has these activities in other dimensions related to other planets in the star system between earth incarnations and how it affects our present lives and his discussion of our sojourns in different dimensions and life beyond earth. And so I wanted to dedicate an episode on what Edgar Casey says about life beyond earth. As much as we identify with planet earth and our terrestrial life here, Edgar Casey's readings of the Akashic Record and the Universal Consciousness tells a different story. From Casey's perspective, we were, are, and will be again celestial beings, traversing the vast expanse of space. Our primal mission is to know ourselves and our Creator. Casey often began readings for individuals by identifying their planetary and stellar influences, and not in the way that you understand astrology. He explained that these were the influences because the soul's journeys through those dimensions before and after incarnating into this world and physical life. The soul experiences dimensions beyond the earth plane. So I've gathered some of these channelings to sort of point these out and share them with you and discuss it. Reading 311.2, he says... As an entity passes on from this present time, or this solar system, this sun, these forces, it passes through the various spheres, on and on, through the eons of time or space, leading first into that central force known as Arcturus, near the Pleiades. Eventually, an entity passes into the inner forces, inner sense, then they may again, after a period of nearly 10,000 years, enter into the earth to make manifest those forces gained in its passage. In entering, the entity takes on those forms that may be known in the dimensions of that plane which it occupies, there being not only three dimensions as of the earth, but there may be seven as in Mercury, or four in Venus, or five in Jupiter. There may be only one as in Mars, there may be many more as in those of Neptune, or there may become even as nil until purified in Saturn's fires. Reading 136.8 As the entity moves from sphere to sphere, it seeks its way to the home, to the face of the Creator, the Father, the First Cause. Reading 136-83 through 83. Self is lost in that of attaining for itself the nearer and nearer approach that builds in manifested form, whether in the Pleiades, Arcturus, Gemini, or in Earth, in Arcturus, Vulcan, or in Neptune, as light, a ray that does not end, lives on and on until it becomes one, in essence, with the source of light. One of the most fascinating concepts to come through Edgar Cayce's discourses were his teachings about the soul activity in dimensions 
related to the other planets in this star system between Earth incarnations and how these affect our present lives. Here are some of these discourses from reading 57551 delivered on the 27th of June 1938. They begin by asking, in all life readings given through this channel, there are references to sojourns of the soul entity between incarnations on the earth plane, in various planes of consciousness represented by the other planets in our solar system. You will give at this time a discourse which will explain what takes place in soul development in each of these states of consciousness in their order relative to the evolution of the soul, explaining what laws govern this movement from plane to plane, their influence on life in this earth plane, and what, if any, relationship these planes have to astrology. Casey begins by saying, yes, we have the information and sources from which some may be obtained as to individual experiences, sojourns, and their influence as we find in attempting to give a coherent explanation of that, as may be sought or as may be made applicable in the experience of individuals who seek to apply such information, it is well that an individual soul entity, the record of whose astrological and earthly sojourns you have be used as an example. Then a comparison may be drawn for those who would judge same from the astrological aspects as well as from the astrological or planetary sojourns of such individuals. What better example may be used then than this entity with whom you are dealing? This is case 294. Rather than the aspects of the material sojourn, then we would give them from the astrological. From an astrological aspect, the greater influence at the entrance of this entity that ye call Casey was from Uranus. Here we find the extremes, the sojourn in Uranus was arrived at from what type of experience or activity of the entity. As Bainbridge, the entity in the material sojourn was a wastrel, one who considered only self, having to know the extremes in their own experience as well as others. Hence, the entity was drawn to that environment. Or, how did the master put it? As the tree falls, so does it lie. Ecclesiastes 11.3 by Solomon. Where did Jesus say it? Then, in the Uranian sojourn, there are influences from the astrological aspects of extremes, and counted in thy own days from the very position of that attunement, that tone, that color. For it is not strange that music, color, vibration are all a part of the planets, just as the planets are a part and a pattern of the whole universe. Hence, to that attunement which it had merited, which it had meted itself, was the entity drawn for the experience. What form? What shape? The birth of the entity into Uranus was not from the earth into Uranus, but from those stages of consciousness through which each entity or soul passes. It passes into oblivion, as it were, save for its consciousness that there is a way, there is a light, there is an understanding. There have been failures and there are needs for help. Then help consciously is sought. Hence the entity passes along those stages that some have seen as planes, some have seen as steps, some have seen as cycles, and some have experienced as places. How far? How far is tomorrow to any soul? How far is yesterday from thy consciousness? You are in same, that is, all time as one time yet become gradually aware of it, passing through, then, as it were, God's record or book of consciousness or of remembrance for meeting, being measured out, as it were, to that to which thou hast attained. Who hath sought? Who hath understood? Only they that seek shall find. Then born in what body? That as befits that plane of consciousness, the extremes as ye would term same. As to what body? What hast thou abused? What hast thou used? What hast thou applied? What hast thou neglected in thy extremes, thy extremities? These are consciousness, these are bodies. To give them form or shape, you have no word, you have no form in a three-dimensional world or plane of consciousness to give it to one in the seventh, have you? Hence, that's the form, we might say, have you? 
What is the form of this in thy consciousness? It rather indicates that everyone is questioned. Have you? Have you? That might be called the form. Is that which thy concept of that being asks thyself, not that ye have formed of another? With that sojourn, then the entity finds need for, as it were, the giving expression of same again, the answering of have you, in that sphere of consciousness in which there is a way in and through which one may become aware of the experience, the expression and the manifesting of same in a three-dimensional plane. Hence, the entity was born into the earth under what signs? Pisces, ye say? Yet astrologically from the records, these are some two signs off in thy reckoning. Then, from what is the influence drawn? Not merely because Pisces is accredited with an influence of such a nature, but because it is, and... The have you becomes then there is, or I am, in materiality or flesh, or material forces, even as he who has passed this way. The entity as Bainbridge was born in the English land under the sign, as you would term, of Scorpio, or from Venus as the second influence. We find that the activity of the same entity in the earthly experience before that, in a French sojourn, followed the entrance into Venus. What was the life there? How the application? A child of love, a child of love, the most hopeful of all experiences of any that may come into a material existence, and to some in the earth that most dreaded, that most feared. These side remarks become more overburdening than what you are trying to obtain, but you've opened a big subject, haven't you? In Venus, the body form is near to that in the three-dimensional plane, for it is what may be said to be rather all-inclusive, for it is that ye would call love, which, to be sure, may be licentious, selfish, which also may be so large, so inclusive as to take on the less of self and more of the ideal, more of that which is giving. What is love? Then what is Venus? It is beauty, love, hope, charity, yet all of these have their extremes. But these extremes are not in the expressive nature or manner as may be found in that tone or attunement of Uranus, for they in Venus are more in order that they blend as one with another. So the entity passed through that experience and on entering into materiality abused same, as the wastrel who sought those expressions of same in the loveliness for self alone, without giving, giving of self in return for same. Hence, we find the influences wielded in the sojourn of the entity from the astrological aspects or emotions of the mental nature are the ruling, yet must be governed by a standard. And when self is the standard, it becomes very distorted in materiality. Before that, we find the influence was drawn for a universality of activity from Jupiter in those experiences of the entity's sojourn or activity as the minister or teacher in Lucius, for the entity gave, for the gospel's sake, a love, an activity, and a hope through things that had become as of a universal nature. Yet coming into the Roman influence from the earthly sojourn in Troy, we find that the entity, through the Jupiterian environment, was trained, as we understand, by being tempered to give self from the very universality, the very bigness of those activities in Jupiter. For the sojourn in Troy was as the soldier, the carrying out of the order given with a claim for activities pertaining to world affairs a spreading. What form, ye ask, did he take? That which may be described as in the circle with the dot, in which there is the turning within ever, if ye will know the answer to thy problems, no matter in what stage of thy consciousness ye may be, for lo, I meet thee within thy holy temple, is the promise. And the pattern is ever, have you, in other words, have you love, or the circle within and not for self, but that he that giveth power that meeteth within many be magnified? Have you rather a based self, that the glory may be magnified, that thou didst have with him before the worlds were, before a division of consciousness came? These become, as it were, a part of thy experiences, then through the astrological sojourns, or environs from which all take their turn, their attunement, and we find that the experience of the entity before that as Ushtild 
was from even without the sphere of thine own orb, for the entity came from those centers about which thine own solar system moves in Arcturus. For there had come from those activities in Ushtilt the knowledge of the oneness and of those forces and powers that would set, as it were, the universality of its relationships through its unity of purpose in all spheres of human experience by the entity becoming how? Not aliens, then, not bastards before the Lord, but sons, co-heirs with him in the Father's kingdom. Yet the quick return to the earthly sojourn in Troy, and the abuse of these, the turning of these for self in the activities attempted, brought about the changes that were wrought. But the entrance into the Rata experience, side note, Rata is Edgar Cayce's previous incarnation in Egypt. When there was a journeying from the materiality or the being translated in the materiality as Rata was from the infinity forces or from the sun with those influences that draw upon the planet itself, the earth and all those about the same. Is it any wonder that in the ignorance of the earth the activities of that entity were turned into that influence called the sun worshippers? This was because the abilities of its influence in the experiences of each individual and the effect upon those things of the earth in nature itself, because of the atmosphere, the forces as they take form from the vapors created even by same and the very natures or influences upon vegetation. The very natures or influences from the elemental forces themselves were drawn in those activities of the elements within the earth that could give off their vibrations because of the influences that attracted or draw away from one another. This was produced by that which had come into the experiences in materiality or into being as the very nature of water with the sun's rays or the ruler of thy own little solar system, thy own little nature in the form ye may see in the earth. Hence we find how as ye draw your patterns from these, that they become a part of the whole, for ye are relatively related to all that ye have contacted in materiality, mentality, and spirituality. All of those are a portion of thyself in the material plane. In taking form, they become a mental body with its longings for its home with right and righteousness. Then ye know as thy mental self is the form taken with all of its variations as combined from the things it has been within without, and in relationship to the activities in materiality as well, as in the spheres or various consciousness of have you, love, the circle, the sun. These become then as the signs of the entity, and ye may draw these from the pattern which has been set, just as the desert experience, the lines drawn in the temple as represented by the pyramid, the sun, the water, the well, the sea, and the ships upon same, because of the very nature of expression become the pattern of the entity in this material plane. Draw ye then from that which has been shown ye by the paralleling of thine own experiences in the earth, for they each take their form, their symbol, their sound, their color, their stone, for they all bear a relationship to one another according to what they have done about. The Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silent." He that would know his own way, his own relationships to creative forces or God, may seek through the promises in him, as set in Jesus of Nazareth. He passeth by. Will ye have him enter and sup with thee? Open then thy heart, thy consciousness, for he would tarry with thee. We are through. And then in reading 189.5.1, he says, The experiences of the entity in the interims of planetary sojourns between the earthly manifestations become the innate mental urges that may or may not at times be a part of the daydreaming or the thought and meditation of the inmost self. Hence, we find astrological aspects and influence in the experience, but rather because of the entity's sojourn in the environ than because of a certain star, constellation, or even zodiacal sign being in such and such a position at the time of birth. Know that man, as has been expressed, was given dominion over all, and in the understanding of same, may use 
all of the laws as pertaining to same for his benefit. In the application of same as a benefit, it is for self-indulgence or self-expression alone. It loses its own individuality in the personality of that sought or desired, and thus the very knowledge may be used as a stumbling stone. But if each experience is as a manifestation to the glory of a creative or heavenly force, or that which is continual thus, the judgments being drawn from an ideal that is spiritual in its concept, then there is the greater growth, the greater harmony, for there becomes an at one with the influences about the same. Reading 281.55, the question is, through other planetary sojourns, an entity has the opportunity to change its rate of vibration so as to be attracted in the earth plane under another soul number. Casey says each planetary influence vibrates at a different rate of vibration. An entity entering that influence enters that vibration. Not necessary that he change, but it is the grace of God that he may. It is part of the universal consciousness, the universal law. And in reading 19471, he says, In giving the urges, then, we find that the astrological influences are not so much because of the certain position of the sun or the moon or the stars, but because of their relationship, which is a relativity of influence or force for being from the body or materialization. There is the activity of the soul in the environs in which certain influences have been and are accredited to the activities from those planetary sojourns. Thus, they become as signs, omens in the experience. And in reading 25991, in giving the interpretations of the records as we find them here, these are chosen with the desire and purpose that this be a helpful experience for the entity, enabling it to better fulfill that purpose for which it entered this experience. Know that one's manifestations in the earth are not by chance, but a fulfillment of those purposes the creative forces have with each individual entity. For the creative influence is mindful ever and hath not willed that any soul should perish, but hath with every temptation prepared a way, a means of escape. Thus the very fact of a material manifestation should become an awareness to the individual entity of the mindfulness of that influence of creative energy in the experience. Then as to the abilities with this entity magnify the virtues, minimize the faults, not only in thy judgments of others, for with what judgment ye meet, it will be meted to thee again. Thus, the purpose of each experience is that the entity may magnify and glorify that which is good. For good is of the one source, God, and it is eternal. Then, as an individual entity magnifies that which is good, and minimizes that which is false. It grows in grace, in knowledge, and understanding. Know that in the manner ye meet, or do, to thy fellow man, so ye do unto thy Maker. Then let it be from this premise that the judgments and the activities of this entity in this material experience may be drawn as a helpful force in its journey through this particular sojourn. From the sources of the previous sojourns, we find urges arising materially in the experience of the entity that is from the previous earth sojourns, as well as the astrological sojourns during the interims between earthly manifestations. Not that there are influences from the position of stars, planets, or the like that may not be met, but these are as urges, just as the environs of an individual in the material plane produce urges because of studies or activities in a given direction, and because certain material abilities are innately a part of the entity's experience. Yet urges often rise in the experience of an entity for this or that, the source of which the entity itself may not understand or comprehend, for no one in the family thought or acted in that direction. Then, this, the environ of the entity, the soul manifesting in the earth, may be called by another name, as with this entity, a part of the present name in the experience before this, and the abilities as an individual to meet others, to influence them in the activities in which certain interests might be magnified, come from the entity's activities in the previous sojourn. Thus, the earthly sojourns make for manifested urges in the present experience, 
Also, those planetary sojourns in this present solar system make for urges that are accredited to those particular planets as states of consciousness that become innately manifested in the present entity. For instance, in this entity we find the manifestation of Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Uranus manifested and latent in the dreams, the visions, the activities, and the high mental abilities of the entity, the ability to reason things through, the stableness of its activity in using not only material but mental forces as an influence to urge others to buy or to be interested in or to analyze conditions. Thus in the present and manifestedly so, the entity might find the abilities as an adjuster or as an individual to give expression as to evaluation of materials or properties or abilities of individuals. In Venus we find that appreciation of the beautiful as related to art, as related to things, as related to conditions in the relationships of groups of peoples one to another. Also from Jupiter we find the association with groups, masses as a reflection in the activities of abilities and that in which the entity may apply itself in the present experience. Uranus brings the extreme in which the entity may rise to great heights of expectation and yet at times find self in a wonderment. Yet innately there are those expectancies in spiritual facts in the occult in the psychic forces that are powers of might for either good or evil for as indicated in uranus there are extremes no as from the first premise that no influence surpasses the will of an individual the power of will is that birthright as the gift from the creative force to each entity that it may become one with that influence knowing itself to be itself yet a part of and one with the creative influence as the directing influence in the experience. Also, the earthly sojourns bring urges through the latent faculties of the sensory forces, or they become characteristic that may be indicated either latent or manifested as the power or might manifesting for only as the entity works with or against an influence does it become magnified in the experiences of the entity. Reading 243.10, in entering, we find astrologically the entity coming under the influence of Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Neptune. These, as we find, have builded and have influenced the entity in the present experience, as we find urges are respecting the experiences as related to innate urges, and that as has been built in the present entity. Aside, let not this be confusing as to innate urges and that as built in the present experience for the application of will and of innate urge through the planetary influences is exercised in this entity as we would find it in few in the experience then we find these as built irrespective of will and those that have been built as respecting the application of will's influence. For will is that developing factor for which an entity chooses or builds that freedom or that of being free knowing the truth as is applicable in the experience and in various experiences as has been built for that built must be met whether in thought or in deed for thoughts are deeds and their current run is through the whole of the influence in an entity's experience. Hence, as was given, he that hateth his brother has committed as great a sin as he that slayeth a man. For the deed is as of an accomplishment in the mental being which is the builder for every entity. Much has been met, much has been built by the entity in the present experience. Much has been experienced by the entity in the various spheres through which the entity has passed. In that built, we find one of the high ennobling ideas and ideals often tempered in Mars through wrath that has brought, does bring, will bring many of the experiences that have been experienced in the building of the entity's inner being to the action within the life. In those influences in Jupiter finds for the bigness of the entity's vision, the broadness of the good or bad that may be wielded in the influence of those whom the entity contacts from time to time, or period to period, 
or experience to experience. And those influences seen in those of Neptune brings for those of that as is of the mystery in the experiences of the entity, the associations in many peculiar circumstances and conditions, the conditions and experiences and influences as bring many conditions as by others would be misunderstood and there be minds that would misunderstand rather than know the truth. In the experiences, there has been innately built the fear of evil in the life, the fear of those that would bring condemnation on those who are in power, and oft is the entity too good to others for its own good. Through the attempt innate to build that which would be releasing of those experiences which have been had by the entity, in those influences seen in Neptune also brings that water, large bodies of water, the entity will gain most through the experience has gained and will gain through sojourn near or passing over large bodies of water and salt water is preferable for in the experiences will be seen fresh hasn't always meant for living water in those as built innately we find one that is in that position of making friends easily and just as easily losing same yet there are friendships made that make for the better understanding in the experience and in those of Venus forces comes the love that is innate in the experience of the entity. Through all the vicissitudes of life this remaineth for the entity has gained much that makes for that as was given. There is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother and he that is just kind to the least of these my little ones is greater than he that hath taken a mighty city. Those building, these kept within the consciousness of the entity will build to that Christ consciousness as makes all free. For in him is the life, and in he is the light that shineth into the dark places, even to the recesses of that of his own consciousness that makes for that which casteth out fear. For being afraid is the first consciousness of sins entering in. For he that is made afraid has lost consciousness of self's own heritage with the Son. For we are heirs through him to that kingdom that is beyond all that would make afraid or that would cause a doubt in the heart of any. Through the recesses of the heart, then search out that that would make afraid, casting out fear, and he alone may guide. I did find it interesting that the group working with Edgar Casey attempted to develop tests that would help individuals identify their planetary influences and their past life influences. Casey said that only the astrological was attainable given that past lives required reading the Akashic record of a soul or the soul awakening to its memories of past life. He guided them to use this astrological information for helping to identify one's vocation. Here is that reading, text of reading 57533. They ask the question, you will have before you the psychic work of Edgar Cayce relative to information from life readings concerning vocational guidance together with the entity, the inquiring mind, Hugh Lynn Cayce, present here who seeks to correlate and use such information. From a study of the life readings, it would seem that an individual's mental and spiritual development is contentment is dependent upon releasing and expression of basic mental and emotional urges coming from planetary sojourns and past incarnations. Please give at this time suggestions for the development of a system or a series of intelligence tests which will reveal these basic urges and help an individual in selecting a life's work. It is hoped that such information as may be given here may be developed and used through scout activities and the Princess Anne schools. Casey says, yes, we have the information here that has been indicated in life readings as to vocational guidance for individuals. In developing a plan or a manner of seeking ways in which individuals might give expression of the latent faculties and powers from the material sojourns as well as the planetary influences, here we will find there are conflicting forces and influences at times, as we have indicated. The astrological aspects may give a tendency 
An inclination and a systematic scientific study of same would indicate the vocation, and about 80% of the individuals would be in the position of being influenced by such astrological aspects, or would be in the position for their abilities to be indicated from same. But the other 20% would not be in that position due to the influences from activity or the use of their abilities in material experience. Hence, in these it would be not only necessary that their material sojourns be given, but as to what had been accomplished through same, and that to be met in the present experience, for as has been indicated no influence astrologically or from material sojourns surpasses the will or the determination of the individual, then there are material factors that rule or govern direct or influence such forces. These may be tempered by the astrological aspects, but these are not the astrological aspects, the major influence or force, the will. Thus, only about 80% of the individuals may have their abilities indicated from the astrological aspects in the direction of vocational guidance as to be a determining factor for such. If some five individuals would be taken and their charts or astrological aspects indicated, and questions asked as to determining the influence or force from same. From such an aspect, there might be given information so that a general chart might be indicated for a questionnaire or a test or an activity that would be of material benefit in a greater number of individuals, but never a perfect score may be indicated for the will as well as the factors of environment have their influence. Question, how can the urges from past incarnations be determined by a test or series of tests? As just indicated, this may only be done by giving the material sojourns of the individual, but if the astrological aspects and influence are given, then there may be determined a questionnaire from the same. Should the chart be drawn from the geocentric or heliocentric system? The geocentric system would be more in keeping with the Persian force or influence. Any other suggestions to Hugh Lynn Casey regarding the development of this at this time? As indicated, there may be charts drawn of five individuals, and a questionnaire may be determined for factors in the individual experience as to what their inclinations or activities are, not by telling but by questioning. Then from same as indicated, there may be given a more direct or correct questionnaire that would be helpful for a large number of individuals but not a perfect score. For in about 20% of the populace at the present time, it is dependent upon what the individuals have done with their urges through material sojourns. As indicated through this channel, some are in keeping with the astrological charts, others are found to be partially, so others are diametrically opposed to same because of the activities of the individuals. Casey's discourses state that all souls were created at the same moment. Yet Casey used the term old soul. Occasionally, he later explained that he meant a soul that has been sojourning in and around earth for many lifetimes. The following is a reading from an old soul, and this reading has many interesting references to planetary and constellational sojourning. This was delivered on November 10, 1933. Casey begins by saying, yes, we have the entity and those relations with the universe and the universal forces that are latent and exhibited in the personalities of the present entity. It would be well to comment upon the oldness of this soul, especially in its activities, as will be seen in periods when the occult and mystic influences were manifested in the experience of the entity in the earth and make for influences that have been or may be made very good or very bad in the experience of the entity. Hence, this is an old soul. In giving the personalities and the individuality of the entity in the present experience, we must approach same from the astrological, though these in the very fact of that given respecting its activities in the earth during such periods when such changes or activities were manifested in the material affairs of individuals make for little that may be compulsory in astrological influence, yet impulses arise from these influences. As in passing from Pisces into Aries, there are those influences innately and manifested in the mental forces of the body, much of both of these, and they become conflicting in the experience at times of the entity. 
Pisces brings rather than mystery and creative forces and magnanimous aspects in students of or in the thought of influences in the active principles of individual impulse with Aries bringing reason or air or airy actions yet reason more than Pisces would make the demands in the self at time for reasons for every manifestation whether material conditions mental or spiritual conditions in the experience of the entity and at other periods it may be said that the entity becomes rather susceptible to influences about the body without considering seriously the sources of the information and as to whether same is able to be verified by others or not feelings of same impress the entity from this astrological influence which as we see does not only control earth's sojourn but the position of the entity in this sojourn through the planetary influences in the earth's solar system as to the sojourns in the astrological influences then we find these are the ruling not from their position at the birth but rather from the position of the entity's activities in that environment mars is an influence rather from the associations than in self's own experience or when dissensions distrust dissatisfaction madness wars arise these come about the entity rather than influencing the activities of the entity other than through the associations with individuals that make demands upon the entity and its activities in these directions these become at times concrete experiences in the entity's activities in the present experience yet these as we find for many a year now and these begin some three years ago will be less in the experience until mars in 38 or 39 becomes nearer in its influence upon the sojourners of those in the earth that have experienced a sojourn in that environment hence this may be said in a manner to be of little influence then in the period or during that period when the entity should make for stabilization in self's experience of that to which it may develop its better abilities in this present sojourn in the earth from venus rather a complex position or condition comes to the experience of the entity where filial or marital or such relations as of loves in the material earth come in the experience not that there hasn't been nor won't be nor isn't existent that which is pure elevating and helpful in the experience of the entity in its relationships with individuals of both sexes in this way and manner yet these have brought some very pleasant experiences and some very contrary and contradictory influences in the activities and in the experience of the entity in the present hence it may be given in passing to the entity that the love of and for a pure body is the most sacred experience in an entity's earth sojourn yet these conditions soured these conditions turned into vitriol may become the torments of an exemplary body and one well-meaning and make for loss of purposes keep the friendships then keep those relationships that are founded upon all that is constructive in earth in the mind in the spirit as to those influences from the sojourn of the entity and uranian forces as may be indicated from that given as to the oldness and as to the delving into the occult and mystic and the application in the experience the entity has sojourned more than once in this environment and under quite varied or different experiences and manifestations hence there are periods when earthly conditions mental conditions spiritual conditions are very good and others when all are very bad in the experience of the entity in the present yet as we find in the application of self as related to the impulses that may rise in the consciousness of the entity in the present experience from those impulses received from the sojourns these may be made the strong fort in the activities of self in the present but they must be tempered from the very experiences in the sojourn to make for not an active force in those experiences from planetary influences in a weak body but turn to strengthening the body physical for the manifestations of the correct raising of those vital energies in the material body through which such influences may make for manifestations and experiences in the earth's sojourn these influences from uranus make for many of the ills that have been in the experience in the body in the nervous reactions to the physical body to the weak experiences to the physical body when the very vital life force of a material body was in danger of being separated from physical 
for an ethereal sojourn as to the appearances then and their influence in the present these are given as the ones influencing the activities of the present body rather than numbers we give those that make for the greater activity in the present before this we find the entity was in the land of nativity and about those places those peoples were the first settings were and the first sojournings that spread beyond the mere force built or about that town that was first capital of this new land or this portion of same and among the activities there are many of those things being reconstructed reenacted that will be not only of physical interest but will with the application of the abilities within self recall to the entity many of the associations that the entity had with the peoples of the land native while the entity did not go what is proverbially called native in the experience the associations were such with those that acted in the capacity of the spiritual leaders or with what were termed the medicine men of the period and with those that later attempted to set themselves as leaders of those people that the entity made friends both with the native and the colonists aiding the colonists in the period to establish better relations in the name of edward compton a distant family name even that may be found among those sojourned in the peninsula land of that portion of the country the entity lost and gained through the experience gained in the application of self for the benefiting of those with whom the entity sojourned and the natives also whom the entity aided in making better cooperative relationships in the activities of the people of the period and time this entity aided in establishing such relationships that there was the trading of the native peoples in distant lands one particular period of interest that may be noted in history was when the entity aided in bringing to the people's corn from the western portion of the native land that sustained those peoples through a very bad period from that period there is an influence often the present in those activities when studies of those people are the experience of the entity and there are both confusing and constructive influences yet when about many of a mediumistic turn many of those with whom the entity engaged in life and activity would attempt to speak to the entity especially one that termed himself big rock black rock before this we find the entity was during that period when there were the returnings of those peoples in the land now called greece from the rebellions that have been active in mesopotamia and the regions about what is known as turkey and those lands during those periods of xenophon's activities in those wars the entity was among the few of those natives strong in body purposeful in intent to return to the native land and the entity gained through the experience but lost in the latter portion of the sojourn when returning to the native land when power was entrusted in the activities of the entity and while the purposefulness was correct there arose those that distrusted and brought contentions by the accusations brought against the entity in the name zergion then zergion lost in faith in his fellow man and the faith in the purposefulness of those that were attributing to the gods or the powers and forces as they were named and termed the elements to maintain the equilibrium hence in that the entity lost and in the present while there are now those abilities in self to lead for a purposefulness in its activity too oft has the entity become discouraged when accusations of unkind things were brought or when experience is made for the losing of confidences in friends and associates it has made discouragements too easily in the experience of the present this in passing may be said is a test period for the entity in its relationship particularly hence the entity should turn to the abilities within and find self first knowing in what in whom the entity has believed knowing he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against any experience that may arise in the lives or activities of those who are his loved ones his chosen who has he chosen they that do his biddings what are his biddings love the lord thy god with all thine heart and thy god meaning him that in spirit is the creative forces of all that is manifested keep self unspotted from the world or any smirch of activity and loving thy neighbor thy brother as thine self these will make for the relieving of all those influences in the experience and bring harmony peace joy understanding in the experience of the entity and will enable 
the entity to not only study, not only to understand, but best of all to comprehend from what source many of those influences arise. As we will see, has to do upon the mental body of the entity and become active oft in the physical forces or the physical activities through their nerve reflexes in a material body. Before this, we find the entity was in the land now known as the Egyptian during that period when there was the returning of those that had been astray through the sending away of the priest of the land. The entity was among those that were banished with the priest, being with the priest Rata in the association and in the activities of gathering together the tenets that the scribe in a way, rather the one gathering the data than one scribbling or protecting the data collected. The entity aided the priest specifically in some of the associations and connections with those of the temple gatherers to whom the priest gave heart and mind, and for the act among those the entity was severely punished when banished by the natives rather than the king. Yet being healed by the priest in the foreign land, the entity came again into Egypt when there was the reestablishing and aided in building the temples of service being active then in what today would be called the preparations for those things that kept the cleansing of the temple after use of individual and body or as a caretaker termed in the present or offices, temples, churches, or buildings. Then the entity was in the name Puth Lur. The entity gained and gained, and much that is suffered in body is as a bringing to bear of that which may make the mental contact with the tenets of the experience. One might ask, this aside please, why would such be brought to bear? Because with the experience of the entity in the period, seeing the developments and the activities, there was set within the soul that desire come what may whatever is necessary in my whole experience of my soul make me to know again the joys of the tenets of rata in the present these may mean much if they are built for a soul development in the present for these needs be to overcome those experiences in the sojourn just previous in the atlantean land before this we find the entity in the atlantean land rather rebelled with those forces of Balile, with those activities in the electrical appliances when these were used by those temples to make the beautiful buildings with but the temples of sin within the entity in the name sail was a priest demoted in the temple of oz in atlantis and lost from soul development gained from material things yet these fade these make raids upon the body and physical manifestations these make for hindrances in activity in that known within the innate self or rather were the mysteries of the black arts as applied in the experience practiced by sail yet these in the present may be turned into account in material things in making material connections but use or apply same in the experience rather in the mental and spiritual manner for the soul development of the entity rather than for the materiality in the present these are weaknesses then yet weakness is only strength misapplied or used in vain ways before this we find the entity was in the land that has been termed zoo or lemuria or mu this was before the sojourn of peoples in perfect body form rather when they may be said to have been able to through those developments of the period be in the body or out of the body and act upon materiality in the spirit or in the flesh these made those things those influences that brought destruction for the atmospheric pressure in the earth in the period was quite different from the experienced by the physical being of today. The entity then was in the name Moom, or rather those calls that make easy the mysteries of words as related to sounds and rote that bring to the consciousness in those that have indwelled in those lands, that activity that merits not the word that brings that impulse that urges that those forces from without act upon the elements in whatever sphere they may bring a material manifestation this must be controlled within self from those influences for these are those things at times that hinder let self then be grounded rather in the faith of that which is was and ever will be the source of all spirit all thought all mind all physical manifestation the one god as called in this period in that period he was called zu in the next om or Ohum. In the next, now known as Egypt, with Rata, he was called Gord. 
as to the abilities of the entity and that to which it may attain and how in the present. First, it may be said study through that known in self of the spiritual and mental forces active in the experience of the body to show self approved unto an ideal that is set in the sun, the Christ, knowing that in possessing the consciousness of his love, his manifestation, all is well. For as is known without that love, as he manifested among men, nothing can, nothing did, nothing will come into consciousness of matter. Not that we may deny evil and banish it, but supplanting and rooting out evil in the experience, replacing same with the love that is in the consciousness of the body, Jesus the Christ, we may do all things in his name, and using those opportunities in whatsoever sphere of activity the entity may find to show forth those commands he gave. If ye love me, keep my commandment. What ye ask are his commandments. A new commandment give I unto you, that ye love one another. What then are the fruits of love? The fruits of the Spirit, which are kindness, hope, fellowship, brotherly love, friendship, patience. These are the fruits of the Spirit. These are the commands of him, that ye manifest them in whatsoever place ye find yourself, and your soul shall grow in grace, in knowledge, in understanding, and that joy that comes with a perfect knowledge in him brings the joys of earth, the joys of the mental mind, or joys of the spheres, and the glory of the Father in thine experience. Question. When will adverse planetary changes for better influences in my life? The answer, as indicated, the receding of Mars brings and has brought better planetary influences as the mental activities and applications in the light of the love in Christ brings with those activities in the coming closer and closer of Venus with Uranus, which begins in December present year for the approach reaching near conjunction in May or June of the coming year better conditions mentally, materially, financially. What is the main purpose of this incarnation, he asks, to set self right as respecting the variations in those tenets in the first two experiences in the sojourn, tempered in those tenets given in Rata that the Lord thy God is one, and manifesting of that oneness in the little things makes the soul grow in his grace. Casey even gave readings on how to subdue negative influences from planetary or astrological soul activity. In a reading in July 24th, 1925, they ask a very long question regarding a person that's on Wall Street giving a reference to a variety of different readings already given. And then they ask the portion relating to undue influences in the life when moon's forces square to Saturn. And then it's then mentioned, please tell just the character of influence that will occur, whether mental, spiritual, or physical, and how this entity may guard against this influence. So then Casey says, yes, we have the body here, and the information has been given to this body in regards to influence as are exercised in the life of the entity at the periods given through position of the planetary forces as are exercised in the life of same. Now we find that with the indwelling urges as are seen within the individual, when there are occur certain positions of those planetary influences under which the body meaning spiritual force body has developed these bring the intense urge towards those experiences of the entity as it passed through that phase of its development for we find the urge within each entity is its experiences in all phases of its existence plus the environmental conditions of body at time with the will of entity counterbalancing same through body mind urge Hence, the necessity of each entity understanding, having knowledge of those laws that do govern same in the material or physical realm, as well as those pertaining to the spiritual force as are manifest through the body in which of its various changes, for we find all are one. For the real body is that spiritual force manifesting in same always through the trinity of that comprising same. In the information as has been given, as we find, these influences come for this body. At this particular or special time, when through the influences are exercised in the position of Moon, Jupiter with Saturn, and with Mars, this brings to that body 137, those of that urge, that doubt of self, and self's abilities to manifest 
either mental moon with Saturn with physical doubting of own physical health through the forces or powers in Mars, the own spiritual force, as is the influence or undue influence on Jupiter's forces with this position as manifested. Then we find these at this time pertaining to this nature. The body mind, the spiritual mind has reached at this period, especially and during the uh, week of August 13th, 1925, that place where the doubts of every nature pertaining to this threefold force as is given here come to the body. Hence, we will find will be easily aggravated through any mental association, whether in business relation, moral relations, socially or marital relations. For seemingly at this time would occur all of these combining with one to bring the detrimental forces to the mind. With the condition of mind comes that condition where the physical forces apparently respond more to these conditions, wherein weaknesses are shown or manifested in same. When the combination of all would bring us to that, well, I don't care. What difference does it make? Let it go to pot. Then to overcome this, rather, place those forces as are manifest through will forces, knowing that these do appear, that get thee behind me Saturn, or Satan, that I will serve the living God with my body, my mind, my money, my spirit, my soul, for I am him. And through me, my body, my mind, do I manifest my impression, my interpretation of my God. This does not, as we see, relate to the physical accidents, physical conditions, physical things pertaining to the material things of life, save as would be affected by same through, well, I don't care. We are through for the present. Notice the end of these channelings, they would say, we are through for the present. They wouldn't say I. So it was almost like a social memory complex was speaking through Edgar Casey when they say we. He was accessing the Akashic, but I think that something more was going on. I refer to this, and there are many times you may have gotten lost. He was specifically referring to specific people. And so you may listen to this and get lost at certain portions of time. But it's important to understand that it's very, very difficult for us to really get a true astrological understanding of our influences because 20% of the time it's not going to matter, as he says. And then there's influences that we have from previous lives that we're not aware of. And then we have other influences that, according to this, were previous lives in other dimensions on other planets. So, of course, we don't see it with our telescope, but there are different dimensions and they may exist in different levels on other planets, in different planes and spheres. And he mentions Uranus here, he mentions Mars, Venus. And so our entire solar system are these different dimensions which are personified in this field or realm of existence as planets that are some distance away, but they are intricately connected to our bodies and our own experiences. And as I was reading that, I had an image that my higher self was giving me that it's almost like a matrix that is formed in these planets and each of them are a part of our own soul's growth. And we have extremes that happen. We have different aspects of our character. And each of the planets represents different aspects of the sun. And each of those are parts that we're learning as we grow in a personality of the creator reflected from the creator. We gain these reflections slowly as we go through these experiences. And there's really no other way for us to do it. We think it's a long time, but outside of time, it all happens instantaneously because all of time exists. As he indicates here, all of time exists. And eventually we figure that out, take some time. But so the biggest thing that he emphasizes when he's channeling this is that your will is more powerful, that you are more powerful than any influence. The reason this stuff is important is it acts upon your instincts. It acts upon your hidden influences that you have, that you're not aware of impulses that you have as indicated. So you might have a certain impulse from a previous life that's related to how friends had abandoned you. An abandonment complex is formed deep within your subconscious. You have emotions that arise that you are not aware of. And it could be from previous experiences in other dimensions that are influencing who you are as a character. And it may be truly impossible to know all those influences. So I take the proactive aspect of this. Instead of becoming reactive, learn your mind. Reprogram the self. 
reprogram the way your mind acts and the way it responds, the programs that it's working. And once you get to that place where your mind is still, you escape those influences and then you can take over all the time that's involved here that you've been going through. You are important. It built who you were and each of these aspects of your character. Now you're in a place on earth where you're learning in a meta level about all these different places that you've already been. Because each time you experienced it, you went through an experience and then forgot in a dreamlike state. And as we come to a higher level of understanding, we're going back and remembering our experience in other dimensions, other realities. As we begin to create other realities that are similar to other planets, we are creating entire universes every second. We're not even aware of the power that we have. It's a slow budding realization. We as fetuses are awakening within this egg the universe is, and we're going through this process. And think about it. There's so many other stars and there's so many other systems of consciousness because the planets then become a system of consciousness that the sun creates in order for you to go through a certain school and each planet on some other level that you may never remember or you may absolutely remember has taken you through these courses and it's super fascinating concept as discussed in the law of one material they had awareness of other solar systems and they had completely different archetypal structures that are somewhat manifested in the planetary influences in that solar system and as i was reading it i got that feeling that the solar system is a body and as he indicates in this channeling it's similar in other solar systems as everything is a sort of reflection so it wouldn't be surprising if we went into another solar system and it had a jupiter type planet it had a uranus type planet a neptune type planet it had all these little aspects but some it could be different and little nudges and changes each sun is the creator stopping and then starting at, on their own journey completely separate and communicating back with the creator as the creator splits itself off it get, begins to have the ability to be conscious in different aspects and each solar system is the creator's first step in consciousness and each solar system is the creator experimenting with different aspects of his own consciousness and the perfect levels of consciousness and then on another level you have galaxies with interacting conscious solar systems that are interacting becoming living beings and it's an amazing wonderful thing to think about sort of get that feeling when you read this stuff and there may be someone out there that can truly access the akashic and also give you your astrological influences as he indicates it's not from when you're born but from when you go through the experiences in some cases. So you may be influenced by Saturn, but not in your astrological record, but it might be from previous experiences in other incarnations or importantly, between incarnations, between different incarnations. And of course, then you have star seeds that are coming from completely different systems of consciousness, different solar systems and shapings of planets. And so we are a very unique planet because we have a bunch of people from a bunch of planets that have been imprinted by different aspects of the creator, all mixing in a hodgepodge, evolving, but in a very chaotic system as it's like uh, they're cooking, right? And they add more and more elements and they're just testing it out. And this one has a very unique mix and the solar system itself is very unique. And so you have this influence. So... I say, let us become aware of these influences and understand them easily. Let us become aware of the influences within ourselves and transcend them because they have no power over us. And I say, in this moment, we remove all negative impulses that come from previous incarnations between lives and during lives. At any planet, in any given time, we ask for a connection to source and pure source in all movements, expressing perfectly. In any case, I would love to get your impressions of Edgar Cayce's discussion of these other spheres of our existence and life beyond Earth. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com.